So, is the Backbone 1 still worth buying two years later after its release? We'll find out in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Nomad Flair here, and today we'll be discussing whether the Backbone 1 is still worth buying in 2023 going into 2024. I have owned this device now for one year and have used it for endless hours. My Backbone 1 is the iOS Xbox button layout version, however this video is also applicable to the Android version and to the PlayStation Backbone. I just wanted to start by highlighting the difference between the PlayStation and Xbox Backbone 1. The only difference is colour and the button layout. Both versions can run PlayStation Remote Play and Xbox Cloud Gaming. The Xbox version comes in black and the PlayStation in white. Whichever you opt for will have the designated button layout for that console. Even though I own a PlayStation 5, I decided to go for the Xbox version only because I preferred the black colour. So today I'll be reviewing the Backbone's performance, design, build quality, price and most importantly providing my opinion as to whether this is still worth buying two years later after its release. Starting off with the unboxing, the Backbone 1 comes in its white box which has the branding at the top and at the bottom are the compatible cloud gaming services such as Streamplay, Luna, Xbox Cloud Gaming, Apple Arcade, etc. Inside the box you'll find the Backbone 1 controller which has a nice aesthetic design. Alongside the Backbone 1 is an adapter which can be used for larger iPhones, also a quick start guide and a safety sheet. When holding the controller in your hand for the first time you'll notice how light it is weighing around 136 grams. You'll also notice how the black color tone looks very similar to an Xbox controller, which I really like the look of. The Backbone logo button on the front of the controller really stands out with its orange hue, followed with the branding on the inside of the controller. This does get covered up by your iPhone when in use. The back of the controller is plain, however, when you pull the sides further apart, the branding appears. Now, let's check out the analog sticks and buttons. The Backbone offers virtually every button you'll expect, delivering a mini Xbox controller experience. The D-pad features a transparent design and the buttons feel fantastic and firm to touch. On the right side, you'll find the familiar X, Y, A and B icons. These buttons are very clicky when pressed, which isn't my cup of tea. I would have preferred a more discreet tactile approach, similar to a PlayStation 5 controller or my absolute handheld. However, some of you might prefer the clickiness. Notably, the thumbsticks have a very similar layout to an official Xbox controller, while smaller than a traditional console controller, they remain clickable and offer a firm feel, which I do like. The controller also includes four additional buttons, including a share button, which can take screenshots and record gameplay, similar to what a PlayStation 5 does. On the right side, you'll find a dedicated Backbone app button, and next to it is the start or menu button. Across the top, we have the L and R triggers. I really like the feel of these when pressed, and the travel depth feels perfect for a controller of this size. Setting up the controller is a breeze. Just pull the controller apart and slide in your phone, ensuring it fits properly into the lightning port. The Backbone is compatible with iPhones, ranging from iPhone 6S to the 14 Pro Max. However, the Backbone controller won't be compatible with the new iPhone 15 models due to the absence of a lightning port. As we know, those models only have a USB-C port. If your iPhone has a camera bump, then use the adapter provided. I'm currently using the iPhone 13 Pro with the adapter and it fits perfectly. Once your phone is fitted, simply download the Backbone 1 app along with the streaming gaming apps that you wish to have. Let's check out the Backbone app. This app is easily accessible by pressing the orange button on the controller. Within the app, you can explore and access all the available games and streaming apps. Navigation can be done either through the controller or the touchscreen, making it user-friendly. The app showcases popular and featured games some of which I may not have installed on my iPhone, but it's a great way to discover recommended games. Notably, the app includes options for remote play and the Xbox app, allowing you to switch easily between different gaming experiences. Let's check out the PlayStation Remote Play app. To use it with your PS5, you need to have the PS Remote Play app installed on your iPhone, and you'll also need to ensure that remote play is enabled on your console, whether it's the PS4 or the PS5. Once you've done this, click on the PS5 option in the app, and it will start searching for your console on the network. Select your console when it pops up and then your home screen will be visible. You can use the Backbone controls to navigate around. I always have my PS5 connected via a wired network using a CAT8 infranet cable, which provides the best speeds and network stability. This in turn ensures I don't experience lag when playing. If you are interested in picking up this infranet cable, I will link it down below in the description. You can now see the difference when I'm using the cable and when I'm not. 
After using the Backbone 1 for numerous hours, I decided that games like Warzone, Fortnite and Apex are best played on a monitor or TV. This was due to three reasons. When playing online competitive games, remote play is not ideal due to input lag. This will always put you at a disadvantage when it comes to online multiplayer games. Secondly, in these games, because everything is so fast paced, I started experiencing headaches or dizziness sometimes due to the very small screen size. Maybe on the iPhone Pro Max, it might be slightly different. Additionally, because of the small screen size, it made me squint and frown more as I was finding it difficult to spot enemies from a distance and even close by sometimes. On the other hand, games that don't rely on instant responses work perfectly, like The Last of Us 2, racing games, fighting games, even GTA 5, etc. You may be wondering how do you use the four buttons on the Backbone controller when it doesn't have a PlayStation layout? And to be honest, the buttons still act the same way. For example, the white button can act as triangle, the A button acts as an X, the B button acts as circle, etc. So personally, I don't find the Xbox layout confusing when playing PlayStation games. The second app which I use a ton is Xbox Cloud Gaming. The great thing about this app is that you don't need to own an Xbox. This subscription service will cost around $12.99 a month or $16. There is a vast catalogue of games spanning from new releases to old school classics like Halo, Gears of War, etc. The games run really well and are fully compatible with the Backbone 1 controls. Speaking of controls, we have a share button which can take screenshots and record gameplay at 1080p 60 frames per second. This is an awesome feature for those who post their gameplay on social media. Apple Arcade games and games from the App Store can also be played using the Backbone 1, providing that they support controller inputs. When they do, the gaming experience is much more enjoyable due to the enhanced control and precision. When gaming with the Backbone 1, I always use wireless headphones for a more immersive gaming experience. If you don't own wireless headphones, then wired ones can also be used by placing a 3.5mm headphone jack into the controller. While gaming, you can also charge your iPhone without any inconvenience thanks to the pass-through ports on the bottom of the controller. To be honest, the gaming experience using the Backbone 1 has been very positive. Of course, if you own an iPhone 12 model or upwards, your gaming experience will be much more enjoyable than the older version iPhones. The graphics will look so much better and so will the frame rate. So you've just watched me review the Backbone for a couple of minutes, but you're still wondering if this controller is worth buying now. Okay, if you're planning to upgrade to the new iPhone 15 range, then the Backbone 1 won't be compatible as the new iPhones no longer have a lightning port. If you're not planning to upgrade, then you might want to consider the price. The Backbone 1 retails for around £100 or $100. Most of you might think that this is cheap, but you're literally spending $100 on a controller, when a typical PlayStation 5 or Xbox controller ranges from 50 to 60 bucks. That's around 50 bucks more. Furthermore, there are many handheld gaming consoles that have entered the market this year, which have a dedicated HD screen. However, the Absolute handheld is very affordable and I would recommend saving an extra 70 bucks and getting this instead. If you want to know more about the Absolute handheld, I'll link my review down below. Since having the Absolute handheld, I have not touched my Backbone 1 since. The reason why is because I want to conserve my phone's battery health and also to not have notifications pop up whilst I'm gaming. I know I can remove the notifications, but I couldn't be asked to enable and disable notifications after each gaming session. If none of those issues bother you, then yes, the Backbone 1 can be a ton of fun, allowing you to play next-gen games from anywhere in your house, on commutes, and when traveling. I've also seen the Backbone 1 on discount on numerous occasions, slashing the price to $70, so do keep an eye out for this when it happens. In conclusion, guys, my experience with the PlayStation Backbone 1 controller has been positive. I love how it perfectly aligns with the Xbox or PlayStation 5 aesthetics, depending on which version you opt for, and it fits flawlessly with my iPhone 13 Pro. The convenience of setting it up and using it for gaming, whether on PlayStation or other platforms, has made it a standout accessory for myself and others too. If you're seeking the best mobile gaming experience, or wish to enhance your PlayStation 5 gaming setup, I highly recommend giving the Backbone 1 controller serious consideration. Links to the Backbone 1 will be left down below in the description. However, if you want an overall handheld streaming console with a dedicated screen, then you might want to consider looking into the Absolute Handheld or the Logitech G Cloud. Okay everyone, I hope you found today's video to be useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and gaming content. And until next time everyone, take care. It's not a game.